Hi guys, I'm um, going to start doing a, um, a series of videos that go through defining games for each console I own. Um, starting with the N64, so this is the games that define the Nintendo 64. First off, we have Conker's Bad Fur Day. Um, it's an adult themed game. Um, it was Rares, Rare of 007 and Perfect Dark. It was their attempt to sort of break the platform mode mold you had think games like donkey kong and banjo kazooie you know very kiddie image very kiddie games um, and it went so far to come filthier than any other game ever played um, and that's what i love about it really um, nowhere else can you get hung over get a hungover squirrel to jump using busty flowers cleavage <laughs> peel anything that moves and fight nazi-esque teddy bears um, the entire thing is just rife with crude and lowbro humour and various movie references as well. Um, if the single, you know, it's not just got a single platform, didn't float your boat, Conker had twisted multiplayer to add the fun. It, players could pick up one of seven mini games, including awesome Total War mode, which is my personal favourite, which involved using chemical weapons to take out the opposite side. Um, plus, it was the first Call of Duty. <laughs> Um, other modes included racing, deathmatch, capture the flag, and even a bank robbery mode. It, it's a really entertaining game, um, and it's more than a little gross, and that's what that's what I love about it. Um, next up, we've got maybe well, definitely one of my favourite games on the N sixty four, GoldenEye 007. Um, this is the game what most people think about when you say N sixty four. Um, it's quite a bit of GoldenEye did for video games. It changed how we handled first person shooters um, it gave us multiplayer paving the way for titles like Halo or Call of Duty to become major multiplayer machines they are today um, it stood on the shoulders of, Ch of Churuk um, showing just what the console first person shooters could do and how popular they could become um, it, it proved that this genre could you know, definitely work with, 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 it, with a controller um, which was previously thought impossible um, you know, it, it showed us that not all Property and movie based video games had to be terrible, which is definitely things that you know, if anyone's ever played ET on Atari 2600, you know, that's definitely a candidate for possibly the worst game ever. <laughs> GoldenEye proved that through such a title hit of 8 million, it wasn't beaten by enough, enough, another first person shooter until a decade after its release. And GoldenEye won considerable praise and numerous awards. It, it, was, um, it was not hard to see why. You know, Anyone who played this game knows how good a game it is. Um, you know, it, it's replay value is brilliant. It, variety of missions, which means you know, you sort of you play through the game and you want to play through it again because the missions are sort of that good. Um, randomized locations and certain goals that change each time. It featured multitude of unlockable cheat codes, which some some are quite challenging to obtain actually. Um, also included a deep multiplayer experience and a large number of selectable skins and weapon choices. It, you know, you could customize your characters really well. Um, it kept true to what it was meant to be, expanding phenomenally on one of the best James Bond films that I've got, uh, my personal favourites anyway. Um, it's a truly great game, and if it wasn't for this, no one would be playing Call of Duty right now. Next up, we have um, Golden Eyes, Little Sister, you could say, Perfect Dark. Um, it's a spiritual successor to Golden Eye. It offers sort of the same. Um, suffers with frame rate. It, um, it takes all that as good predecessor and runs with it into a um, to a whole new term way really. Um, you know, it was the first game called espionage. It took up militant um, militant enemies. Um, once through the main storyline, there are unlockable missions, cheat codes, and co-op um, cooperative gameplay styles, so, um, which it also introduced that but that Goldeneye didn't. Um, massive multiplayer system support to four players or, or eight bots. M multiplayer, multiplayer matches could also be customised um, further than in GoldenEye, such as the bots AI to certain styles of selecting individual weapons instead of the groups that GoldenEye provided. Unfortunately, to keep up with everything rare put in the game, GoldenEye Perfect Dark requires N64 expansion pack most to access most of the content. I only expect 30 hours to get into the game is accessible without. And the single player campaign is completely inaccessible. The game is also compatible with the transfer pack. And for Perfect Dark for the Game Boy to unlock several features. Um, it was probably the first game to use that, to use that um, the expansion pack. Um, 
the proof that I was supposed to be compatible with the Game Boy Camera and I pitched to friends. Um, tr really, really great game. Um, I think, as a gameplay wise, it's better than GoldenEye. However, because GoldenEye was first and it's James Bond, I'd probably choose GoldenEye over this. But a truly defining game for the N64. Next up, we will we have Lilac Wars. Or if you live in America or anywhere outside Europe, Star Fox 64. It comes in a huge box, I've got no idea why. It comes with all it comes with is a rumble pack. Um, the SNES original is a brilliant game, but this far surpasses it. Um, Utilise the 3D graphics of the Nintendo 64 really well. You know, at the time the results were spectacular. Um, depending on the actions completed in any stage, um, unlockable systems, uh, system different systems could be unlocked. Uh, medals throughout the game. You know, it could, you could say it was the first game to use sort of uh, achievement unlockables and things like that. Um, you know, it really took to they use the same things in the 16-bit area. Um, do a barrel roll becoming a popular internet meme. Um, the game straight too true to its on its true to its roots um, using the rail system. For much of the game, though, some levels or areas allow free flight, which my personal, which is why I think it's probably better than the SNES um, Star Fox. It sold 5.5 million copies around the world and continues to go on a high mark. It's probably the most well received title in the series. Um, I don't think any of the games recently on the on the Wii or the GameCube have come close to how, how good this game is. Um, the I haven't actually played the 3DS version yet, so I might might purchase that soon. Um, like I said, it comes out with the Rumble Pack. Um, so it, and this was the first title. This was the first title to use it. Not um, Perfect Dark. Um, I think it might may have been the first rumble pack you could get on a console. Um, so again, the gaming industry owes a lot to this game. Next up, we have my personal well, probably my personal favourite when I was younger. Anyway, Super Smash Brothers. The hours I spent playing this game is untrue. It, um, I remember my summer holidays playing this game when I was sort of eight and I, non-stop, um, all day every day. It was absolutely brilliant. You know. You're not a fan of Mario or you're tired of other Nintendo characters. You, you, you know, th this game is completely different from any other Nintendo 64 game. It's basically where you have anyone who hasn't played it, it's Nintendo characters fighting each other. So if you don't like Mario, you can get Donkey Kong to kick the crap out of him, <laughs> which you, know, you may, may want to do. Um, you know, not in a, tr in a traditional sense, but it did offer up to four players' chance to battle various characters. Um, Across a variety of stages, you, know, you could battle at Hyrule Castle um, or in Donkey Kong's Jungle. It was a really good game. Um, it was fairly simple controls and easy to learn rules, but the combination of randomly spawning items and interactive stages um, led it led it to be a, a front runner in a Nintendo 64 and a cornerstone of any 64 collection. Um, it was it's continued since then on the on the, on the Wii and the um, GameCube. But I don't think anything adds up to this. Um, the nostalgia with this game is probably more than any other game. I think it hasn't aged too well. Um, I think because the game from the new game just is is far surpassed it. But still my personal favourite in the series. Um, and a really really great game. Next up we have my personal favourite Mario Kart, Mario Kart sixty four. Um. While Mario Kart, while, while Super Mario 64 recreated the Mario characters in 3D faithfully, Mario Kart 64 gave the 3D tracks to race on, with eight eight playable characters, six which returned from Super Mario Kart. Um, you could race as, as against um, against your friends or against the AI. This is probably the first game that was really good for things like parties with people come around and you could play Mario Kart with up to four years. It was really good. Um, various um, different ways of playing it with the time trials or the battle mode in the arena. Nine million copies of this were sold, and it was re-released on the Virtual Console in two thousand and seven. Um, I think that this this is definitely well. It's a giant leap from the SNES version. Um, definitely better for multiplayer. Um, the introduction of the of all the items that you can new items that you can throw each other made this game far surpass the SNES. Now we have Super Mario 64. Um, 
if there's one game probably that defines the N64, it is this game. Um, it's a launch title along with Pilot Wings. Um, but n I think only Mario could have moved into 3D with such ease. Um, Nintendo did it perfectly. First 3D game, 3D game that I played was this. Um, you know, as I never flat race to finish levels, not like miniature worlds. It was almost like a mini RPG e each different level. Various paths to take um, in order to advance. Um, it was the first Mario game to use an analog stick. And controls would enable far more sophisticated series of movement um, than previous titles. And I highlight the console's strength that became the highest selling N64 game, with gamers picking up 11 million copies. That's a lot of games. Um, the game's success continued on the Wii's virtual console as well, um, and the handheld remake for the DS. I um, haven't actually played it yet, but I've been told that it's um, just as good. Absolutely br brilliant game, a game that I go back to time and time again. And finally, um, possibly you know, a couple of the best games of all time. Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Um, not a lot can be said about these games that I haven't that hasn't already been said. Um, you know, Majora's Mask. I'll start with talking about Majora's Mask actually. Um, it was the sequel to Ocarina of Time and focused on Link as a child in an adventure where he was trapped in a three day loop. It, um, the first game to use the sort of a day cycle. Um, basically, every three days in the game, the time the world resets and only certain parts of Link's actions had a permanent effect on the world. A really clever game. It's got a really dark storyline. Um, it, it, it was criticised at the time for being it, it's in, inaccessibility, and some players found the formula more than a little frustrating, which is probably true. Um, it does have a polarising effect on fans, but it's well worth trying if you're used to the Zelda formula. If you want something a little different, Majora's Mask offers you that definitely. But as good as Majora's Mask is, I don't think. It come close to this, but I suppose nothing has um, since its release. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. In my opinion, if anything defines N64, it's this game. Um, you know, Link's, trans Link Link's transition from 2D to 3D was you know, probably the best received by Tooth Mario 64. Um, it's applauded throughout the gaming industry. It's recognised as possibly the greatest game of all time. Um, you know, there's something magical about riding through Riding on a pony through Hyrule Field and hunting for Poe's. Um, it's it's a giant game. It's f rife with side quests and hidden hidden sublines. And a long time since the series fans were created new means of challenging themselves. Um, introduced so many things sort of like the Z um, lock book and lock Z lock target um, system, um, automatic jump. Um, you know. It can. It is possibly, well, it is in my opinion, perfect, um, or as close to a video game can get to it. Um, truly magnificent game. Um, thanks for watching. I, um, I'll probably do the next video, maybe the defining games of the Dreamcast. And um, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.